important. It's the most important question to ask yourself and to get the answers for if you're getting an aquarium or if you already have an aquarium. Um, this is the most asked question to me also. So uh, today I just want to enlighten you about uh, how to know if your aquarium is going to leak, if it's going to at least be stable, if you have anything to worry about. Now here's a disclaimer. Uh, if you don't follow these steps, there's quite a high chance of your aquarium either cracking, your stand letting go, or having some type of accident. Because in 90% of the cases of aquariums that have leaked or collapsed, uh, one of these five steps has not been followed. So <laughs> now that we got this out of the way, let's move on to uh, how to know if your aquarium is going to leak or if your stand is going to be resistant enough. Um, so number one, uh, you're getting an aquarium. Ask yourself um, if your floors are going to support the weight of the aquarium. I do believe that uh, each pound, uh, each, no, each liter of aquarium is equal to eight pounds or perhaps is it in gallon I'm gonna write it right here so you know and you have the visual um, so this makes aquariums extremely heavy uh, number one you have the weight itself of the aquarium glass weighs a lot of weight and so does acrylic a little bit less but depending on the thickness of your panel it can weigh even more um, and water in it that's it it's so heavy when it's full so you have to make sure that your floors are going to be able to withstand the weight of the aquarium and where you place it is super crucial you have to place your aquarium on a supporting beam wall meaning there's good supports to the structure of the building right where you're gonna put your aquarium do not place an aquarium on floors up if you're not on a supporting beam let's say in the middle of the room don't do that if your uh, apartment or house or condo is not made out of uh, cement and you don't have a supporting beam in that location don't put it there it's gonna start uh, making your floor shift and it's eventually gonna lead to either a collapse or a breakage of the aquarium or it's gonna end up in your neighbor's apartment downstairs you don't want that happening and I've seen it happening uh, so m my recommendation is put it against the wall or close to a wall uh, something supportive not in the middle of a room middle of the rooms is like the worst idea to do uh, unless you made sure that it's good uh, you can consult a building engineer they will tell you if you have supporting beams in that location um, that's why I chose my place because um, there's nothing be beneath us it's all cement and earth so we're good here so if you're gonna have a big big aquarium make sure it's stable underneath now um, secondly uh, this is the number one reason why all tanks leak okay and I'm not gonna withhold it till the end of the video you have to know it right now because it's the most important okay aside the floors it's the leveling of your aquarium. The level of your aquarium is number one reason why all aquariums that I've seen have leaked. Now what I mean? Um, I mean that your aquarium should be straight, not like that. If you see that your water is more on one side and less on the other, chances are your tank is not leveled. And what that does, it basically creates a pressure point where you see your water is the highest in your aquarium in that corner or in that panel is your pressure point and most of the pressure of your aquarium depending on the angle it's at it's going to create double or triple the amount of pressure on that point as it is on all the other sides so what are you going to have you're going to have a tank that one of the joints is going to let go and it's going to start leaking or if you have like weight on each, either side of your tank like i've seen it recently happen someone put the ceiling and the walls around an in-wall aquarium on the tank rims on each side and it bowed 
the aquarium so in the middle of the aquarium it let go and the whole bottom just was basically apart so you have to check your level of the aquarium really really important and when you're leveling it never level between the aquarium and the stand always between the stand and the floor okay you're gonna use something called shims let me just reach beneath hello this is an awesome video awesome tutorial here do some exercise <laughs> just kidding um, shims are these things you get at the um, hardware store I hope you can probably see this um, this I use uh, to level all my tanks basically let me take one out basically see this shim you enter it until the level that you need sometimes you need multiple shims but you see how this is like a triangle type of thing it goes in an angle so you just put underneath of your stand as much as you need of the shim in order to level it uh, if your stand has like four legs one of the leg is down okay and you try to level all the other legs around it if you try to level all four legs you're gonna end up just gradually going up and up and up and there'll be no limit to it so have one stable leg give you your base uh, level and then level the other ones accordingly you can have two supporting legs if you're only going down one side you just have to raise that side uh, but use a level to do that obviously if your tank is more um, with a stand that's like connected to the floor like it's one piece straight then you legitimately have to level the whole entirety underneath your stand like put shims all under your stand to level at each point because if you just lift the one side well then you have all the other underneath that's not strong enough to support it so always level your stand okay number one cause of leaky tanks all right did i miss anything about the... oh also uh, speaking of stands you need to make a protective layer protective layer between the stand and your aquarium what i mean by that see this aquarium okay uh if you have a um a stand made out of steel okay you will have to put actually plywood between um, the aquarium and uh, the metal because plywood is like a shock absorber so if you have any imperfections it will sink into the plywood now the other um, layer that you need in between the plywood and your aquarium is the protective layer the waterproof layer right so here my tank is already made out of wood right so we have the wood which would be the technical plywood if your tank was made out of steel that would be the first layer on top and this here is a yoga mat this absorbs the rest of the imperfections between the stand and the aquarium and on top of the yoga mat just in case your yoga mat is not waterproof 100 percent i put uh, some duct tape or white tape or some other transparent membrane uh, something nice and aesthetic but waterproof so that if your tank was ever I don't know you you do maintenance you splash ends up on your wood most of the wood used for your aquariums it's called melamine uh, I don't I'm not sure if in English it's called melamine but in French it's called melamine and it's basically compressed wood chips and if water touches those compressed wood chips it's gonna swell up your tank and uh, not your tank your um, your stand and it's gonna just render it completely like mush and it's never gonna be good again so prevent your stand if it's made out of wood or chipped wood from getting wet you need in all measures to avoid water going onto your wooden stand so always have the protective waterproof layers before it goes through it. This stand was actually damaged by previous owner, but I reinforced it from the underneath. So that's the other thing. You have to make sure your stand is strong. You have to inspect it. If it's made out of steel, make sure it's not all rusted. And if it is, make sure it's not like way past the point of a return. Sand it, repaint it avoid any water or salt water getting on that steel stand because it's gonna rust it and a rusty iron or whatever it's gonna fall apart 
Same thing with wood. If you see that there was a water infiltration, either reinforce it with plywood from the underneath, like where you see, um, okay, these are your four feet, right? And it's a closed stand. Well, reinforce it next to the four feet with more plywood, all right? Or just get a new stand. Get a new stand. If you see that your wood is too swollen, don't risk it. It will collapse. Not today, not tomorrow, but in six months from now, from the weight of the aquarium, if the stand was damaged, it will collapse. And if it's not leveled, 100% it will collapse. So don't put yourself at risk. Have a good, decent, strong stand. And also, um, if you're going to build the stand yourself, here are some links for the tutorials of that. <laughs> um, either here or below, I will put it. Um, there's a certain um, mathematical formula in order to make the stand strong enough for the weight you're going to put on it. And if you're buying your stand in a hardware store, make sure to see the max load and see if your aquarium is above the max load or under. Make sure it's always under the maximum load capacity of the stand. If you're buying from a pet store, make sure it goes with the kit. If it's steel, normally it's very strong. So that was uh, number two, actually. Hey, we have three more points to go on to. Number three, you have to inspect the silicone of your aquarium, the joints. Now, let's uh, see here. Um, I will try to find you a tank where I redone the joints. You have to inspect uh let me see let me see this part right here okay if in this part right here you see any bubbles don't trust this aquarium i don't know if you uh you see my finger hold on let me go if in this part right here you see bubbles in between uh the two panels your tank is at risk at very high intense risk if this part is damaged get a new tank if this part is damaged, where it's only the silicone chipping away, get the silicone redone or redo it yourself. I have tutorials about that, I'll put it in. So make sure there's no bubbles in between the panels. That means the tank has been um, subject to a pressure point or some incredible damage, but it's no good, okay? Um, small tiny ones like that it's like production bubbles it, it came with it but major bubble infiltration between the two panels it's no good it's just don't do it but if you can redo your silicone yourself right here i've redone mine see perfect so there's ways that you can make sure that your silicone is not like total scrap but if you see bubbles in between don't trust it and if you're going to buy that tank walk away walk away all right that was point three inspect the silicones joint bubbles and i'll add up a tutorial on redoing the silicone here all right number four we got two more points number four inspect the bracing what is the bracing well let's come here again the bracing is this this is the original brace inspect the original brace is in good condition there's no cracks there's nothing weird about it you know it's strong it does if you try to lift it it doesn't detach all right make sure it does not detach this one as you can see was damaged this middle brace completely uh just was broken in half that means there was a pressure point and it was bowing forward here i redid the brace of this aquarium uh this is one way of doing it i will come closer you glue uh, the first panel beneath and these two transversal from here and underneath uh, there also there's a panel. That's one way of doing if your middle brace is scrap. There's another way of doing this. This is called the Euro brace. If you see your brace is damaged, don't give up on your tank just yet. There is the Euro brace. I hope you can see it properly. This is an aquarium also redone. Never mind this panel here. I'm actually going to remove it so you can see the Euro brace properly. Ah, where am I going to put this? Poor dog. <laughs> the dog was on the couch. So this is called the Euro brace. See, there's the two main panels. 
they're on the long panels of the aquarium if it's a square one well I mean just do it that way still so you put these two first you let it dry and then you put these ones see how much silicone connects the two of them it does not have to connect here but it connects them strongly here and if it was a bigger tank you'd put another one right here okay so you have to make it extremely strong um, like oh when you redo the bracing make sure that the thickness of your brace is equivalent to the thickness of your glass six millimeter six millimeter if it was 10 millimeters you do 10 millimeters uh, most glass shops go up to 12 millimeters so you can fix a pretty big tank with that and always use a uh, silicone number two hundred percent silicone no anti-mold in it because the anti-mold is gonna kill your fish so silicone hundred percent all right let's go back and explore our point number five we're nearly done in knowing if you're gonna explode or not all right uh, point number five, you have to do the water test. After you've covered all the other four points and you make sure everything is pinpoint, you have to do number five. It's your water test. You're going to completely fill up your tank up to the bracing, okay, because sometimes you'll want your tank to be really full. Up to the bracing, you fill it up and you wait 48 hours. That will tell you if there's any weak points. You'll see if your floor is shifting. Uh, you don't start putting fish and stuff. You don't do that, okay? Please don't do that. Be patient. Have an empty tank but full of water and test if it's going to collapse or not. <laughs> That's how I do it. Um, so 48 hours for the water test. Uh, normally, if there's any issues, you'll see it during those 48 hours. If it's going to mentally... Um, it will show you if your floor starts shifting you'll see it so I hope this was informational enough for you uh, I hope um, you'll take this advice to heart because I don't want any of you to have water damage and have to redo your house your flooring uh, it's stressful and plus the fish are gonna die like don't do that <laughs> so yes thank you so much for watching I hope I helped you out a little bit if you like this video please like it subscribe and if you want to see more of me, please hit the bell button because sometimes you just don't get to see my videos. Like they don't come up in the feed just randomly, like when I update. I don't know why YouTube does that. They just do it. But if you want to see my videos for sure, 100%, hit the bell button. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you shortly. Bye.